dear friends uh, we will talk about the competencies associated with reflective thinking and reflective learning in this module different competencies can be nurtured for reflective learning through different kinds of learner centric and learner directed activity with the support of a teacher in this unit we will talk about reflective learning and reflective teaching when i talk about reflective learning <clears throat> it means a learner learns through own reflection when i talk about reflective teaching it is a teacher makes use of his own reflection to teach and to help learners to reflect and to learn so these two things are there one is reflective learning on the part of learner and in reflective teaching a teacher becomes a reflective learner also because a teacher reflects learn and teach for encouraging reflection now the third point comes about the reflective thinking when we talk about reflection as a cognitive process it involves deep thinking process where as learners or as teachers we try to understand things in depth and to think about its own consequences so it involves a critical inquiry approach where we are involving ourselves in reflective thinking reflective learning and as teachers we make use of both reflective thinking and reflective learning process for promoting reflective teaching to encourage reflective thinking and reflective learning of learners now if you say john dewey talked about reflective thinking as an active persistent and careful consideration of any belief or supposed form of knowledge in the light of the grounds that support it and further the conclusion to which it tends it means it is involving our active participation analyzing our experiences studying things in depth and to formulate our own knowledge in the context of the grounded reality that supports us to arrive at the conclusion of our own there are different types of reflection one is reflection in action when i say reflection in action it involves a process of decision making while actively engaged in the action for instance a teacher reflects on teaching while being engaged actively during teaching second is reflection on action so it is the critical analysis and evaluation on action which has been already taken a teacher have already taught in a class and after teaching 
we are seeing that how well our teaching took place and what kind of teaching learning practices we organized that led to achievement of learning outcomes. Third is reflection for action. That is a futuristic projection, planning, forecasting, and to ensure the responsibility and accountability for decision making of teachers on teaching, learning, and evaluation practices in schools. So, it, as a teacher, a reflective teacher, in reflective teaching process, we touch three dimensions of teaching, that is, during teaching, after teaching, and prior to teaching with a futuristic and a forecasting-based preparation. The teacher's reflective practices. What are different practices that lead to teacher's reflection and teacher's reflective thinking leading to all the three dimensions, reflection in action, reflection on action, and reflection for action. One is the teacher's academic focus. And academic focus is that teacher engages himself continuously on learning process and linking such learning with enrichment and transformation of knowledge base. The second is the social efficacy focus where a teacher interacts, the teacher monitors, teacher promotes and teacher builds conducive learning environment for learners to act in a group with full autonomy. The third dimension is development focus, that the teacher contributes to own thinking and development. At the same time, a teacher facilitates development of learners' learning. The fourth area is the social reconstructist focus. This is related to the critical pedagogy where we are talking about education as a means of bringing transformation in our personal life, community life, social life and life in global perspectives. So social reconstructivist focus, it is directly linked with empowerment process where teachers empower themselves to bring transformation in teaching learning process. So on these four areas, a teacher makes use of reflective thinking and reflective teaching learning practices. There are hierarchy of reflective practices. When we talk about reflection, reflection takes place from the ground level reflection to the highest order reflection. The, grounded, the ground level reflection starts with description, narrations, what we have come across, what we have learned, what is happening in our surroundings. So that is known as description writing. The narratives. The narratives are the fundamental requirement of reflective teaching learning practices. Second is description reflection. Description reflection gives emphasis on the teachers going through own handbooks, teacher going through own diaries and teachers going through own classroom performance-based descriptions contribute to describe further his or her own reflection about his or her own action. The third dimension or the, in the hierarchical order, it is dialogic reflection. 
in dialectic reflection the teacher takes too far like seeing our face in front of a mirror so i play two roles i am an inquirer i am a problem solver also so a teacher perceives himself as a seeker of knowledge who raises different questions and try to find out answers for different questions so teacher is playing the role of learner and teacher is playing the role of a teacher so it is asking questions and giving answers so a teacher playing two roles in dialogic process the highest order of reflection is critical reflection critical reflection means i reflect on my own experiences but when i listen to others when i am exposed to others reflections i try to reconstitute review and think critically that how i can reorganize or reconstruct my own thinking process taking into consideration the global perspective or the views and visions of others so when you see the hierarchy of reflective practices as i narrated now will continue on this point that hierarchy of reflective practices descriptive writing means a teacher prepares a reports on each class maintaining diary it may contribute to take stock of what happened how it happened and what it led to and what can be used for preparing the next class description reflection it talks about focusing on the activities its description along with the efforts to explore why some consequences were noticed during my teaching so by describing the things i keep on raising further questions dialogic reflection as i said it involves writing a descriptive note in dialogue form asking questions playing one role and answering questions playing another role so a teacher makes dialogue with himself on two fronts critical reflection a teacher tries to contemplate on action taking into consideration the contextual realities and the realities as perceived by others now dear friends when we talk about reflection in teaching and learning reflective teaching involves both reflective thinking and reflective action so reflective thinking unless it leads to intervention or action in classroom situation it doesn't lead to reflective learning so a teaching is based on reflection and reflection is based on teaching so teacher becomes a learner teacher makes use of his or her own reflection to improve on her action and by improving on her action he learns from her own action so this is a continuous process and it leads to autonomous learning of teacher and autonomy of learning and autonomy of teaching so reflection gives insight into what was right and what was wrong in the process of learning and teaching there are different types of reflection in learning one is the individual reflection the individual reflection is that as a learner i learn and i reflect on my own learning activities and my own interventions planning executions and formulating different ideas on the basis of my experiences there are group reflections group reflection means when we interdepend on each other we work in cooperative learning situations we make use of our social competencies 
social skills, dialogues, interactions, appreciations, listening to others, collaborating with each other, contributing our best to formulate different hypotheses and solve the problem. So we present on ideas, we peep into the other's views and other's perceptions, we listen to others and we form and reconstitute our opinion. What are different advantages of group reflection? In group reflection, as we will study in cooperative learning and collaborative group learning practices, we are giving more emphasis on our own directions, our own decision making and our own learning through our own reflection. So group opportunity gives us the scope to listen to others' opinions, to listen to others' comments, to appreciate others' remarks and observations, to react on the problems, and we formulate and reformulate our views about our own learning. Our exposure to others' reflection on different problems and different kinds of activities and experiences, it encourages to us as individual learners to reflect on relevant aspects on action, which I could not have perhaps understood it clearly with my own observation or experience. Now we talk about different modes of educators thinking and teacher autonomy. Danny Lesson and his colleagues, they formulated four modes of teacher's thinking and teacher autonomy. One is formulaic thinking. Another is situational thinking. Third one is deliberate thinking. And fourth one is dialectical thinking. From first, second, third and fourth they are put in order. Formulaic thinking is a low level of reflection because it is based on structured activities. The guided activities, directed activities, in a structured curricular framework, the packaged knowledge and some exercises given in textbooks that promote our thinking process. So external source of learning promotes instructional decisions regarding curricular practices. So it is the lowest order of reflective thinking practices. Second is situational thinking. When I am talking about culture-specific learning, environment-specific learning, we link our environmental resource support and experiences with learning experiences for transforming and improving our own experiences of life. So our learning decisions are made on information gathered during specific time, in specific context, in classroom situation or school campus-based activities organized under the supervision of teachers and mentors. Third kind of thinking is deliberate thinking. It means 
we as learners we seek more and more information in our classroom situations in our school situations and it enables us to explore what best we can do to solve specific problems and in which way it will contribute to improve our competencies for delivering good to our students in classroom teaching and in school surrounding best experiences for the highest order of thinking is related to critical reflection that is dialectical thinking it is beyond the deliberate thinking where we do not restrict ourselves only to ask questions to explore alternatives rather we try to integrate our thinking process with others experiences and views and we try to generate alternative solutions by interacting with others and having dialogues and adopting social competencies through our professional forums so there are different considerations for supporting teacher reflections one is teachers reflection must be encouraged at the planning and preparation stage so when i plan something how i'll have to do well to achieve the curricular objectives by promoting reflective learning practices that needs first priority and how well i will prepare my role as a facilitator in classroom situation or in school situation that encourages teachers own reflection in planning various kinds of activities for creation of learning environment so the second domain here is that the learning environment related competencies so when we try to reflect on our previous experiences the contextual situational thinking will help us to promote and to develop suitable learning environments so that learners will adapt different reflective learning practices in group learning situation promoting reflection and critical reflections so teachers competencies must be developed in the context of building suitable learning environment and third domain is how learning experience related competencies will be developed among the teachers this is done through natural settings of learning in school situations our teacher training programs will have to be linked with natural teaching learning conditions taking place in the school so the school internship practices our observations in real school situations interaction with mentors practicing teachers experts peers the administrators preparing observation notes and reflecting on our descriptive reflections so various activities organized during our internships that promotes the professional competencies of improving 
learning experience by interacting with our students in real classroom situation. The fourth domain is principal teaching, which is indicating the professional ethics or professional values of teachers. Professionalism is developed through interaction of teachers with other colleagues inside the institution as well as outside the institution. There are different forums related to different areas of curriculum and the content-based curriculum like mathematics, science, general science, environmental science groups, literary groups, social science groups. On the other side, we have social emotive sides of curriculum encouraging creative writing, exhibitions, free expression, the sports, the games. So there are various forums where teachers interact with each other and share their experiences. Different forums, workshops, seminars, colloquiums, and group-based activities taking place inside the school at local level at regional level, at cluster level, at national level, and at international level. So our exposures to our colleagues, to the members of professional guilds, that strengthens our professional ethics, and that helps us to build transparency in our thoughts and expressions, and it strengthens our base to improve our professional competencies and sharpening our ideas and knowledge base. So our continuous journey for professional development in collaboration with different professional groups that contributes to the research-based activities and sharing our innovative practices and creation of new ideas and knowledge related to teaching, learning, evaluation, and educational management. So, these are the four areas on which teachers' reflection is encouraged. Now we'll talk about assessment of reflective teaching and learning. When I say teaching for reflection, and learning to encourage reflection, it must be integrated with assessment process. As we know, we have two kinds of assessment. Assessment is formative in nature. Assessment is summative in nature. When we talk about formative assessment, we are highlighting assessment as an integral part of learning, assessment and learning, their differences are blurred. What is to be assessed in the context of reflective learning? Here, we will have to give more emphasis on development of cognitive skills. That is, we must have reasoning, power to assess, we must have articulative powers to articulate our thoughts in words and in pictorials and in projection forms, giving new interpretations of ideas and experiencing the interaction with others and outer world. So, we'll have to see that in assessment process, we must give emphasis on assessing our cognitive skills and metacognitive competencies. So the metacognitive thinking process is giving prime value in the assessment process. In this context, we will have to focus on learners' abilities to compare and contrast experiences as we come across 
in our daily life situations in simulated forms in the form of artificial intelligence. We'll go for metacognitive aspects when we talk of assessment of reflective teaching and learning, what we do? We have to interpret the events as presented through various sources and its significance in learning. So interpretation abilities is very much significant in assessment process. The emotive dimensions, as I said, that talks about the empathy, fellow feeling, tolerance, reflective learning also covers the skills of demonstrating our social and emotional process. When we talk about assessment of reflective teaching and learning, we are talking about our abilities to interpret the events as presented through various sources and its significance. We are giving more emphasis on interpretation abilities. We are talking about social emotional dimensions of competency. It talks about our empathy, our fellow feeling, tolerance and inclusive feeling for students, inclusive feeling for our colleagues. Reflective learning also covers the skill of demonstrating original thoughts in various ways, that is, through our literary expressions, demonstrations, visuals, and exhibitions. There are different tools of assessment. One is the self-assessment. What I do how I do and what I should do, that is pure assessment. And how well I did, how well I should do, that is pure self-assessment. Second is peer assessment. Peers observe and they make reflective expressions about our performance about our planning, about our activities, about the learning output. Third is teacher assessment. The teacher, as a facilitator, monitors the progress of learners from time to time and keeps on reflecting on students' performances. So there are different ways. One is students' learning profile assessment. So, we call it as portfolio assessment. Portfolio assessment, it means the learner's progress on different competency areas are rated on continuous basis and the portfolios are maintained in graphic forms. It helps us to discover the learning potentials of each student on different areas of learning outcomes in the context of different performances. It helps us to explore the strength and weaknesses of students on different learning outcome areas. It helps students to gain insight into their own learning abilities and potentials. It helps us to develop suitable learning strategies by teachers and learners to improve the performance in our own day-to-day -day learning practices and teaching practices. And the last point is that the supportive function of a teacher, facilitative role of a teacher is strengthened to support learners and at classrooms, at school, and at our home. So, dear friends, we talked about reflective learning, reflective teaching, and reflection-based teaching learning practices, and how to improve the competencies 
of reflective teaching and reflective learning and reflective learning linked with formative assessment is valued very much in this regard thank you very much mm -hmm.